All right, we are back. We're going to go with uh, item number 18, also from Ben, wherever he may be. There he is right there. You're on, man. Okay, I apologize. Um, waiting for the word. So, um, I just we just made it through the heart of the of the next few items um, with, with the last um, with the last item. And so, the item before you here now is regarding to your Newcomb Ranch development agreement. So, as part of those twelve um, growth <coughs> policies, and due to the size of the subdivision, there there's a requirement for a development agreement. And so, <coughs> the development agreement was worked out with um, the developer. Um, it basically establishes, uh, primarily it establishes specifics of the project, if there's any specific requirement, um, but, but particularly it, um, um, it lengthens the time of the map. And so, um, it's, so it, it sets criteria for pl 20 plus years for this entitlement process to be valid, plus room for extensions. And so as briefly discussed, Newcomb Ranch, um, the development agreement is before you right now. That's in regard to the development in the blue. Newcomb Ranch. Um, here's the Bogue Sewer Master Plan land use plan showing the location of Newcomb Ranch. So tentative map 1406 and 1407 were approved by the Planning Commission at their, the, the tentative maps are approved at the Planning Commission level but they would be not be applicable um, until the until, um, this, this city council makes that general plan amendment, the sphere and the zoning. And so in the DA, it specifically um, discusses that about um, the approval of those maps is invalid unless the other items move forward. And so um, a little reference on the types of maps. So there's a large lot and a small lot. And I, I briefly hit on that is that the way that even though we called it phase one, it's gonna come in in, in in chunks. And so there's 161 acres, 12 lots, 12 large lots ranging in size from 3.61 acres to 21.48 acres. And so you can see the blue um, with the reference to the large lot. And so the way this is set up with the tentative map is that um, the developer could come in, parcel this 161 acres up into these 12 parcels and then individually sell those off, and, and then those would be incremental phases that would come in. And so then you would have phase one or phase 12 come in with another subdivision lot under, under, um, under the, the small lot subdivision that would basically then trigger all the improvement requirements. And so um, in these villages, there's a reference to the number of units. And a little more information regarding the DA, that it's, a, it's really a contract between the city and the developer defining, defining processes and criteria for the subdivisions to be developed. This DA is intended to satisfy, satisfy the city's growth policies and was requested by the applicant um, specifically for that length of time. Um, and then also it's the primary benefit is, is the, the third bullet is that 20 year plus. And I think we have um, an automatic five year extension plus a couple other multiple extensions based on request. So with the certification of the Bogusert Master Plan EIR, no further environmental assessment is required. And the staff recommends that we introduce an ordinance approving the Newcomb Ranch Subdivision Development Agreement between the City of Yuba City, Newcomb Ranch, LLC, and waiving the first reading. I'd be happy to answer any specific questions regarding the DA. Questions? Public comment on that? <coughs> I 
Shaw Menard with MHM Engineering, uh, representing Newcomb Ranch on this uh, DA. And uh, we've worked with the city quite a bit on this DA, and uh, we're okay with all the conditions. Uh, one of the items we, we wanted to talk about is um, to see how we can address it is, remember the condition about the uh, undergrounding of the lines along uh, Bogue Road. In the condition on the tentative map that was approved at the Planning Commission, there was a requirement to underground. Um, I've gone to some of the project here at workshops and there's consideration of changing that policy. And I was wondering if there's a way if we could put that in the DA. So if the policy changes throughout the city, we're not conditioned to do that. Um, it is a very big burden on this project, as all projects in the city, to underground. So if there's a way to add a, a, a section into the DA, that if the city policy on undergrounding is changed, that we would have the flexibility without going back, taking our plan, uh, tenant of MAC back to the Planning Commission and get it modified that it's covered in the DA. So if there's a way, I, I'd probably need the attorney to ask that question. But uh, otherwise, we've um, done great working with the city staff and we're okay with all the requirements and conditions of the DA. I do believe we probably Need to discuss that offline of some sort, unless you have an answer off the top. Uh, we do have an answer off the top. Right. right now, those policies are still in effect. Uh, one of the ways that we suggested is just simply amend the tentative map to remove the condition once the council decides what exact policies it wants. So that condition could be removed by just amending the map. There wouldn't be a need to do it as part of this development agreement at this time. So I'd li we'd like to do that. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Do the mayor. Can you say that again? You, you, you said that in your softest voice, Shannon, that... I, I'm it's sorry. It's condition 67 of the... Uh... So that the tentative map has a condition on it that requires undergrounding. If you want to change that condition in the future, you have to amend the tentative map. We're doing the development agreement right now. The proposal is, is to put that change in the development agreement. As a practical matter, at least from my perspective, you're still going to have to amend your tentative map to remove that condition. And since that condition is consistent with your current standards that you have, um, my suggestion would be is to wait until you decide what updated standards you want from your ad hoc con committee or whatever else that you may be setting up. And then once those are established, then it's just a matter of going back to the Planning Commission and amending that condition on the tentative map so it's removed and the undergrounding is not required. That would how it would be typically done. So in other words, you wouldn't have to address it this evening. That was a really short answer. Thank you. So, through the mayor? <clears throat> yes. Through the mayor. So does that mean these folks have to go back to Planning Commission to pay a fee in order to get this amended uh, the, in the future? The tentative map? Yes, usually there's a process of going back to the Planning Commission to remove a condition that's been put on by the Planning Commission. So the tentative map's not before you tonight. What's before you tonight, uh, council member, is the development agreement. Okay. The, the development agreement acts like a, a snapshot. It's an agreement that kind of freezes everything in time. Okay. You know, Sh Shannon, I just want to add on to that, that the way that condition was written on the tentative map, 67, was that, <coughs> or as a pr modified per the undergrounding policy. And so if our DA reflects, the, the way the DA is written right now, it reflects that they need to build the, do the conditions of approval. So um, I, I think his comment is definitely noted and, um, and documented for the record. In the way, instead of trying to do a last minute DA change, I think it's handled through th that condition of the map that it reflects that policy change. So if we were change that policy, then it would the DA would enforce whatever that change was. Um, we'll definitely look at it at a staff level and, and if there has to be some sort of um, clarification we can work through that okay as long as we're not approving some sort of roadblock to amending that if what if it comes i understand the way that condition is written it, we should be good they're conversing i'm just making sure oh okay all right thank you for i'm going to ask because i don't want to the question came up is if we change our policy are they going to have to reapply Based on what Ben said, the condition terms are, the answer is no. Because the condition, the, he apparently designed the conditions of the tentative map such that there would already be built-in flexibility. Perfect, thank you. 
so, so let me read that condition just so everybody's aware of it. So it was condition 67 on the Newcomb Ranch tentative map, small lot. Prior to issuance of any certificate of occupancy, all existing overhead utilities of 26,000 volts or less or proposed utilities both on site and along all project frontages shall be placed underground. The undergrounding shall extend the entire frontage or as approved by the public works director to facilitate construction and or meet current city undergrounding policy. So with that in there, whatever they are, it, we'll, we'll change it. Okay. You were leaning back in your chair. Yeah, I know. Uh, if, and the reason why I was leaning back is because I was thinking about the exact language, and I understand where Sean's coming from, given that language. There is some ambiguity there, but if it's the city's interpretation that we have interpreted that and Ben's understanding that, that it will provide that flexibility, in other words, if you change the standard, that condition will be changed. I think with the discussion we have here on the record, making that clarification, and with the existing condition 67 and part of the track map or, or tentative map, um, we should be fine. Perfect. All right. Through the mayor? Yes. Are you ready for a motion? <laughs> ready. All right. I'd like to introduce an ordinance approving the Newcomb Ranch Subdivisions Development Agreement between the City of Yuba City and Newcomb Ranch LLC and waive the first reading. Second. 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 Third. Annie was fourth. first on that one. I don't I don't know about your hearings. And what? Nothing, sir. And um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you.